Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. It has been a while since uh, my last video, and so I hope you have been well. And the reason for my absence, as you can gather from the title for today's video, is that I am currently expecting a baby girl actually in February. So I am just about a couple of days shy of the six month mark. And uh, unfortunately, it has been a very difficult pregnancy. And so, uh, so sewing was just not even on the radar at all because I was just so sick. I was, uh, I suffer from a, a very serious uh, morning sickness, or in my case, it's really morning, noon, and night <laughs> sickness for 10 weeks. And so, for those 10 weeks, I was just 100% incapacitated. I was just so sick. I couldn't really do anything. Uh, but luckily, um, I was able to keep uh, food and liquids down. So at least I did not you know, suffer from dehydration or malnutrition. But it really uh, impacted my ability to do anything. And especially because you know I'm a lawyer, and it's really impossible for me to sit at my desk and uh, and really do any work because my brain was just not even focusing on anything other than the constant uh, feeling that I was about to throw up, even though luckily uh, I didn't do that very often at all. Um, but, but also luckily <laughs> during this time, because of the horrible stock market we've had in the US this year, so clients were not really doing anything. So in a way, I didn't have a whole lot of work pressure, uh, you know, this way. So in a way, the timing was uh, fairly fortunate uh, versus say this time last year, uh, I was just really, really busy because the market was so good. So a lot of clients were doing a lot of planning, uh, you know, in preparation or as a result of the IPO of their stock and so in a way it was a lucky uh it was a lucky timing uh in that sense so when my morning sickness uh sort of improved significantly uh towards the end of september um even though i still was not in any shape to make any clothes i wanted to do something creative and uh, so i made a whole bunch of uh, cold process soap as you can see from the picture here and here the picture shows you two trays you know i once they are done and cut i leave them out on this sort of baking sheet to dry um, to cure and so there are two of them in the picture but i actually made a total of five trays so as you can see i've been quite productive and the reason i kind of got started in uh, this making cold process soap was uh, about five or six years ago. I made a, I made a, some fried chicken, and then so one of the issues with making any deep fried food is what do you do with the used oil? And traditionally, you know, you are taught to just wait until it cools down, pour it into a plastic container, and just throw it out with the rest of the trash. However, I could not help feeling that was quite wasteful, you know, because oil is still a resource. And plus also I feel hesitant about just throwing it and contributing to the landfill because I do try to live a low waste lifestyle as much as I can. Uh, so I just did not feel comfortable about throwing the oil in the trash. And so I did some quick research and it turns out you could use you know oil to make soap so i uh so i did that and actually it turned out it worked out incredibly well actually uh, the very first batch was a success and uh and after letting it cure for about two months i.e just you know leave it out to dry air dry um it actually works incredibly well it was a very mild uh soap actually and uh so i just fell in love with it and then because i i don't use any um petroleum based product uh you know in my personal care 
and also for cleaning my home. And uh, so that's what I have been using ever since. Um, before, I just used sort of a quote-unquote organic natural products, but they invariably, they still come in in plastic bottles. And I really try to reduce that, you know, as much as I can. And uh, so the picture here, um, so recently, um, as part of my pregnancy, uh, in the early on, actually, I had such a strong craving for fried chicken. Um, and I do not just want to go and buy fried chicken from the stores because invariably the fried chicken will be fried in some sort of a soy, you know, bean oil or uh, peanut oil or hydrogenated oil. And these oils are all highly inflammatory. So I really avoid that. And so I, I made some fried chicken using avocado oil. Um, and, uh, and then so the leftover oil, uh, I made uh, I made this soap. So this is a a hundred percent sort of a used avocado. Uh, I mean, hundred percent avocado oil uh, from the leftover from my fried chicken. And it's interesting, even though originally the oil obviously had that fried chicken smell, but once you made it into the soap, it has zero smell. It just smells like clean soap. So so anyway, so that is. Uh, my fried chicken uh, oil soap and also the reason for making this soap is also because I was out of uh, laundry soap and so I needed to make some laundry soap and for the laundry soap I just use 100% coconut oil and so here you go so this is a piece of the coconut oil uh, that I use and so as you can see because coconut oil uh, you know makes very white and also very hard um, bar so that's my and so if I do hand wash laundry, which I do a lot of the time, especially for all my handmade clothes, I always hand wash them. Uh, they are not, you know, they, I don't wash them in my uh, laundry machine. So I always use this uh, coconut soap uh, for my hand wash, but also I just grind it up, uh, mix it with some uh, baking soda in my food processor and the powder can be used in my you know, regular so uh, in my regular uh, washing machine and that works incredibly well and I have never had any issue uh, using that for the last few years so that's that and also um, kind of funny as I was like making all this soap I discovered a, uh, a jar of uh, duck fat that somehow got forgotten and so even though it was never opened, it had become, I think, a little rancid. So it's not something I would use anymore for cooking. But I also did not just want to throw it out. So I, uh, I try, So I also made it, uh, some soap out of this jar of uh, expired duck fat. And so here it is. So this is my duck fat. And it also has a very faint duck fat uh, smell, but it doesn't smell rancid at all. So uh, so that's my duck fat sort of uh, soap. And then also for personal care, I just generally stick with 100% olive oil soap. So I also made some olive oil soap. This is 100% olive oil. And so as you can see, the color is a bit greener versus the avocado oil here. And so because, you know, olive oil, I use um, an organic extra virgin olive oil for my soap. And uh, so you can see the difference in color. And so, so also because I also do not uh, add any uh, fragrance or even essential oils. The reason is because uh, usually I let my soap cure for quite a while, easily a couple of years. And so by the time I use the soap, the scent would have disappeared already. So I saw no point in, you know, adding that uh, essential oil. And also part of it is I do give these uh, soap as gifts during the holidays. And you never know if somebody is, you know, has very sensitive skin. So I'd rather just keep it, uh, the ingredient list as minimum as possible. As a general rule, just a single ingredient uh, soap. And also another thing, if you uh, are familiar with co-processed soap making, uh, a lot of times people use a super fat, meaning that the oil you use 
is more than what can be reacted with the sodium hydroxide or lye. And the idea was that the extra oil that is not reacted uh, would be moisturizing. However, that has not been my preference. Uh, number one, I just didn't notice any notice any additional uh, nurturing properties if I do it that way. And number two, as I mentioned, because I tend to cure my soap for quite a while, and invariably after about two, three years, the excess oil would just become rancid. And then the soap would just become kind of, you know, smelly, you know, because it would smell like a rancid oil on the outside. And also it become a little sticky. And so I just didn't care for that. So what I do is I just have zero super fat, meaning the oil that I use is exactly the amount required to react with the lye. And so it's zero, uh, zero super fat. And not found that soap to be drying whatsoever because as I mentioned, you know, my for body and face and etc., uh, I use 100% uh, olive oil and olive oil by nature is very uh, gentle on the skin. And so this is also the soap that we use, uh, you know, after the baby is born when I bathe the baby in due course. And uh, so, uh, so that's kind of what I do. So as you can see, I have been keeping myself busy despite the fact I was just really not well enough at all uh, to do any sewing. The first dress that I will share with you today is this one here, uh, made from about a yard of about 60 inch wide, 100% uh, cotton fabric that I purchased from Joanne about uh, the end of last year and uh, so here's a close-up look of this uh, color in the print as you can see it's a uh, sort of fairly vibrant green with white polka dots and I previously also used the same uh, batch of fabric uh, for a open neck bow tie cotton top that I talked about uh, in my video 72 and uh, so the reason for making this t-shirt dress, um, actually it makes three of these, but the reason for this t-shirt dress was that uh, I became bloated about a week after the confirmation of my pregnancy. And so the pajama bottoms that I made um, in the beginning of the year that I talked about in my video 70 uh, just didn't fit me right away and uh, so I needed to make something and so luckily I made this uh, before my morning sickness set in uh, you know during week six and so this dress was made using a most beloved new look pattern uh, new look 6246 however the mistake that I made in early on in my sewing journey was that I would actually uh, cut out the size you know that 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 I was making um, which I no longer do these days and so the problem was I needed to make this dress larger than what I normally would wear but uh, but unfortunately I already cut out the the t-shirt pattern in size A so I couldn't just simply size up you know say a couple of sizes so what i did was uh it's actually pretty simple so how you turn a standard regular t-shirt into this sort of maternity uh t-shirt dress is i simply as you can see you know this is the has a bodice neckline and obviously two sleeves so what i did was just extend the size seams uh by three quarters of an inch in either direction so both the right and the left side seams both uh you know each side i extend by three quarters of an inch and same thing with the back bodice piece and so that gives me a total of a three inch ease uh, overall and uh, that so instead of making a larger size which i was not able to do uh so this is how i you know extended the size and so it was able to accommodate it. But now that I'm, you know, almost six months past that point, well, five months past that point, 
So as you can see, this, uh, this dress is a bit snug at this point. So I will most likely need to make uh, another batch uh, to, you know, so then I will have enough uh, to last for the rest of my pregnancy. And obviously, once you extend the side seams of the t-shirt, I also need to extend the size of the sleeve piece. In this case, the sleeve piece normally looks like this. So what I did was just also extend the side seams of the sleeve piece by the same amount, i.e. three quarters of an inch this way. And so that made, so that's a very easy modification to turn a regular t-shirt pattern into a larger size or maternity size uh, t-shirt dress. And about turning it from a t-shirt to a dress, I just kind of extended the side seams down and you just kind of determine how long you want it to be. And uh, so that's what I did. And so, uh, so I made three of these. And so this is one. And also another one, uh, I made it using this uh, also cotton fabric, also from Joanne. It's sort of a camouflage print. And so this is number two. And the third one, I don't have the dress with me, but I made it using this sort of a pink fabric, uh, also from Joanne. And the reason I don't have this pink dress uh, to show you was because I accidentally got a giant stain on that t-shirt dress and then I couldn't get out. So I thought I would just show you the fabric. And one thing I learned was interesting uh, because I was trying to uh, sort of have a shortcut. So what I did was, uh, because knit fabrics would not fray. So for this was the first uh, dress I made. And uh, so originally I didn't bother uh, over, I didn't uh, bother serging the edge. So I just folded it over and then, um, and just, you know, and then stitch it down using a longer stitch length. In this case, I use the three millimeter length. Uh, but strangely, as you can see, you know, I apologize for the condition because I've been wearing these nonstop on rotation since early June, and now it's already mid uh, November. So I've been wearing these nonstop for five months, so the condition is uh, not the best. But anyway, as you can see, some of the, the stitching popped already. Uh, so which was not surprising because I did not use a, a say thunderbolt stitch because I use a straight stitch. However, for this version, I did search the edge. So as you can see, for example, here, um, I did search the edge and then I sold it down using a standard uh, straight stitch. And even though I wore these t-shirts equally, uh, this one, the stitching has not popped at all. And so, so that's interesting because I didn't expect it to make a difference, but it did. And the difference is quite noticeable. Uh, so, so that is something I thought I would share with you. So here is a quick video of this uh, simple t-shirt dress. And I paired the dress with a pair of Converse uh, flats. And this is pretty much what I look like uh, this past summer. Uh, because I wore these dresses all summer long, both at home and also when I walked my dog or when I went to the store, etc. So that's pretty much what I look like all summer. Uh, so, uh, so I'm really glad in a way that I became so bloated, I would say, what, a week after my uh, positive pregnancy result. Uh, because then about a week after I made these t-shirt dresses, I became so sick with the morning sickness and so that would have made it impossible for me to even think about sewing anything and also because when you when I looked online for any kind of simple t-shirt dresses they were I couldn't find anything that's made with a hundred percent caution they always have some sort of polyester blend which I really try to avoid so so in a way it was a bit of a blessing in disguise that I became bloated so early on and so that 
uh, allow me, you know, to that prompted me to make these t-shirt dresses and that has saw me through uh, the first six months of my pregnancy. So overall, it was a good thing that uh, to have happened. The second dress that I will share with you today is this uh, pussy bow uh, blouse dress uh, that was made using about three yards of uh, 56 or 57 inch wide uh, rayon viscose that I purchased from fabric.com about two and a half years ago. And uh, so here's a close up look of the texture itself. It's a standard kind of a rayon, I think some sort of shelly maybe. Uh, so it's a very smooth, there's no texture to it. And as you can see, it's a black base with white polka dots. You know, as you, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a fan of uh, the polka dot uh, print. So, uh, unfortunately, I found out that uh, Fabric.com has since ceased operation uh, as of October 20th or 21st of this year, uh, which is a bit of a bummer because I, I really enjoy shopping on Fabric.com because the organization is incredibly intuitive for me and also the, uh, the vast amount of fabrics available. But anyway, uh, but luckily uh, I have plenty of fabric in my stash. So there is no danger of running out of fabric anytime soon. So anyway, so the inspiration uh, for this dress was that, uh, well, the, the reason for wanting to make this dress was that I just kind of got tired of wearing leggings and oversized t-shirts all the time. I did purchase quite a few uh, sort of extra large 100% cotton t-shirts from lensin.com because I needed a larger size clothes to accommodate for my changing body, but I was just too sick to make any clothes. Uh, so I did purchase several very oversized uh, t-shirts from lensin.com and lensin.com is one of the few websites in the US that still has a very good selection of 100% cotton uh, t-shirts because just about everybody else these days will sell garments made with primarily uh, polyester or very high percentage of polyester blend. Anyway, so but then I was just kind of tired of wearing leggings and oversized t-shirts all the time. And that seems to also be the uniform uh, that other pregnant women wear uh, when I go to my OBGYN and that seems to be what everybody else was wearing. But I was just kind of feel, you know, wanted to have a bit of a change. And so when I finally uh, feel better, uh, not 100%, but still feel better about 10 days ago, I decided I want to make a a dress uh, for a change and so I started to look for inspirations and uh, so I looked back at uh, all the garments I have ever made uh, and really the favorite one uh, of all was this uh, silk pussy bow blouse dress that I talked about in uh, video 46 the one made with a silk uh, to a dark, the one made in silk with dark brown background and the very large uh, size polka dots. And that one was just by far the my favorite make of all time. And so, and also because I'm generally just a huge fan of this pussy bow blouse. And this pussy bow blouse uh, is a free pattern from Mood Society. And I will link it in the description box below. And I previously uh, talked about this uh, Onella Pussy Bow Blouse in my videos 41 and 43. And then after those, after making several of the Pussy Bow Blouses, I decided to turn that uh, pattern into a blouse dress. So in that case, the Pussy Bow Blouse dress that I talked about in videos 44 and 46 has a separate bodice and a separate skirt. However, when I wanted to make this uh, maternity dress, I knew there would be no separate uh, bodice because right now my waistline is 
somewhat non-existent at this time. And uh, so to turn it into a maternity dress is also quite simple, actually. So, uh, so number one, uh, because I noticed that my rib cage did expand, so I knew I needed to size it up. So in this case, uh, I, I still have the original pattern piece that I print out. And by, by then, you know, I, I no longer cut out the size I wanted to make. I just trace it out. And so in this case, I just size up the body, the bodice by two sizes. And obviously, you know, when you determine how much you should size up, you would just simply measure yourself and kind of, and also measure the pattern pieces minus the seam allowance to kind of get an idea of what you need. And for me, I just simply use the t-shirt dress that I just shared with you. And I figure, okay, by now I, I'm not expecting my upper sort of, a, you know, from the bust up to really change very much. So in that case, I just use that as a guide. So, okay, so I figure if my bodice width, you know, is that, that should be enough. And, uh, and then, so, so that, so that's why I went up by two sizes was because I determined by measuring the t-shirt dress. And as to the rest of the, the dress itself, uh, let me stand up. As you can see, there is no waist seam here. So it's just a straight extension of the blouse itself. And how I extended it was, uh, so, so then what I did was actually pretty simple. So starting from the bottom of the arm side, I just thinned out the pattern piece. And uh, I thinned out a little more for the front uh, piece because that's where most of the volume will be. And so the back piece, I thinned out a little less and the front piece, I thinned out a little more. And as to how much I fanned out, I just kind of measure myself, you know, the widest part of my pregnancy belly. I mean, here's a quick view of my pregnancy belly. And so when I was patterning this, uh, uh, this dress, I measured the widest part of the pregnancy belly. And at that time, it was about uh, 38 inches. And then I figured, okay, maybe, you know, since I still have about three more months to go, maybe it will grow to maybe 48 or 50 inches. And so I, so how much I found out was determined by that. And so I found out and then measure it. And the, the, and the first draft, now that was before I cut out the pattern pieces. When I first kind of determined how much to find out, I just drew the lines with pencil and then it turned out it was not quite enough. So I found out a little more. And then so I can measure it again. So, okay, so the final dress, I think gave me about 48, 49 inches uh, for the widest part. And how I measure it, just like, you know, measure it here. And then I use a measuring tape to go from the weight, from the shoulder seam to this widest part of my pregnancy belly. And that's how I determine where that widest part of that um, not the widest part, how much to find out because the stress will find out sort of this way, you know, it's a bit of a very exaggerated A line. And so obviously the hem would be the widest part of the entire dress. And so that's how I got to this uh, maternity dress. And for the sleeves, uh, I didn't change it. Um, I just uh, used the original Onella pussy bow blouse except I shortened it because the original one was very long. The idea was like you create volumes based on the excess length because it does have a cuff and by pushing it back you do create this. But when I was designing this dress I knew I did not want too much volume because I'm already fairly large at this point so I don't really need more volume you know so the sleeves even though it's a little puff you know so obviously it's not a fitted sleeve but it's also not very puffy so this looks like that and uh for this dress i use the uh there's a lapped cuff here and so uh, i learned from i learned this technique from the my monster shirt uh that i talked pr about previously but any uh shirt pattern that you purchase would have that instructions. 
and so this is not a lot cup so it's very easy oh and then another reason for making this Onella Pussybo blouse was because I figure because of my pregnancy my range of motion is somewhat limited at this point so I figure it's easier if I the dress has a front opening you know just button and unbutton versus uh, a zipper in the center back so that was another consideration for settling on this Pussybo blouse dress and for this dress I uh, as I mentioned you know there is no center waist seam and so what I did was the idea was I'm hoping that I would still be able to wear this dress post pregnancy and maybe I was just taking the side seams back in again uh, as much as I could and so so to give myself a little more definition I made a simple waist tie here and so for now see it's a waist tie and I just tie it under my bust and then you know the tie is in the back here and the idea is that you know after pregnancy I would just move this waist tie down to my natural waist and also because I also have uh, enough fabric left over so I could also make a belt uh, for that and so here's a picture of uh, the comparison of this dress with and also without the waist tie as you can see uh, I do think the waist tie gives this dress a bit more definition so it looks less like a tent you know so it does uh, I think it is a little more flattering with the waist tie uh, but I could wear it either way uh, depending on my mood I aligned this pussy bow blouse dress uh, with uh, also about three yards of uh, uh, rayon Shali, like here, you know, black, and that I purchased from Fabric Wholesale Direct.com, uh, I think earlier this, you know, in the beginning of the year. And so, uh, this is a funny story about this lining. So, originally, I wasn't planning on lining this dress uh, because, you know, it's a maternity dress. I will only wear this one time uh, because this is my first, but also will be my last pregnancy. And so, I didn't particularly feel uh, inspired to spend you know a lot of time on this dress however after I sewed up the the front and the back pieces and also inserted the sleeve before the cups I tried it on because I did not make any mock-up or toile for this one and so I actually feel like I quite like the fit it, fit, it seemed to fit fine you know I liked it so I decided to line this dress and uh, so whatever it was because it's been what more than six months since I made a lined garment and so I became a bit rusty so when I was uh, in you know basting the lining and the outer shell together I wasn't paying attention and I did it uh, wrong side out and so end up instead of the right side you know the, the smooth side touching my skin I had the lining seam side touching my skin and by the time I, I already sewed up the base of the neckline and also the slit for the, um, the lapped cuffs. And so originally I was like, oh, I really did not feel like I'm picking the whole thing. Uh, and so I tried it on, but it really just was not comfortable. I, the seams really did bother me. So I said, okay, fine. I accepted. And so I just unpicked everything and then obviously turned it right side out this time and redid everything but I am really glad I did that because it's now perfectly comfortable and uh, so I'm very happy I did that but it was just like how in the world did I make such an obvious mistake but you know what everything happens things but uh, things do happen so that's okay and also two additional points about turning a, a standard blouse or shirt uh, pattern into a maternity blouse dress or shirt dress pattern is that you know in addition to number one I size up the bodice and number two you know I fanned out the the side seams starting from just under the arm side out and number three is that uh, because most of the volume is in the front you know for the pregnancy belly so the front dress piece should be longer than the back dress piece and this is exactly the same rationale as 
uh, people with a larger bust because then to have a larger, you know, because if when your bust is larger, it will lift up your front piece and to have a level hand, the front piece naturally will need to be longer than the back piece. And so the same concept applies to making a maternity dress. And normally for, uh, for my non-pregnancy dresses, the front piece is about half an inch to an inch longer than the back piece because I am a cup A and so the difference is not very big. But for the maternity dress, I ended up have the front piece for me ended up being about two inches longer than the back piece. And so now when I stand, well, let me see here. So now this would be sort of fairly level. And as you can see, it's still a little bit longer maybe. But the idea is that because I, as I, my pregnancy progresses, it will lift up a little more. And so, you know, kind of even. So, so that's uh, number three uh, for the turning a shirt or blouse pattern into a maternity dress. And number four is that I found that it is much more flattering to have a shorter dress versus a longer dress. So originally when I cut it out and I wanted to accommodate the growing pregnancy belly. So originally the, the, the dress was about almost four inches longer. But then it just, so originally it was below my knees. But then it just looks so frumpy on me, it just looked terrible. So then I shortened it to the knee length. And then it still looked incredibly frumpy. So then I shortened it again, so now it's about just above the knee, and I think it looks uh, much better this way. And also, it's not too short that I feel, you know, like, you know, that I may accidentally flash people. <laughs> so that's kind of good. And also because uh, this one I most likely will wear with a maternity tights when it's really cold. And so maternity tights would be in black. And so that, so I figured that would be fine even if the dress is a bit on the shorter side, but I don't think this dress is too short. So anyway, so, uh, so that, that has really, so I'm really happy about the first attempt of this maternity dress. Because when I looked online for maternity dresses, number one, they're incredibly expensive. And number two, in their way, they're never aligned. And to me, you know, an unlined garment is simply not comfortable because I can feel the seam. So I just didn't like that. And number three, also, I haven't done it, hadn't, didn't do any sewing for several months. And in a way, I kind of really missed it. So I'm really glad that I recently do feel better and that allowed me uh, the energy uh, to make this dress. And so I'm really happy about how it turned out. So here's a quick video of this uh, pussy bow blouse maternity dress. And I paired the dress with my good old three and a half inch heels in black. And I'm very happy to report that so far my feet have not really, you know, swollen up. So I could still fit into my old shoes with no problem. And so here, uh, one side of the screen uh, shows the dress without any belt. So it's a very loose fitting and kind of flowy maternity dress. And the other one is the one that is worn with the waist tie, or in this case, really just under my bust. And so you can kind of compare uh, the two versions uh, side by side. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video on how I uh, turned a simple t-shirt and also a pussy bow blouse into maternity dresses. As you can see, the modifications are quite simple and uh, I think the results are very satisfactory. And also, I would like to have a special shout out to a very special viewer, Jane Matthews. Jane, thank you so much for checking on me. Uh, she she was so nice. She text she uh, sent me a message, 
uh, through YouTube uh, to check on me because I hadn't uploaded a, a video for quite a while and I truly feel very touched uh, you know so I want to uh, thank you uh, sort of in person uh, you know in today's video thank you so much and I know we have a wonderful sewing community here so I you know so really uh, I am really truly touched and also that's why I also wanted to uh, make this video to update you on what I'm up to uh, and uh, and I do have another uh, maternity dress planned and uh, so hopefully I will be able to upload it in a few weeks I am starting to get quite busy I work now with uh, year-end projects and so unfortunately now because I am as you can see I'm quite out of breath already so now because I can only work for maybe three four hours a day before I become so exhausted so I, I do need to focus on that but I will not abandon my channel and so there will be another uh, maternity dress coming up I really love that one and so that will be a surprise for you uh, so do stay so please do stay tuned so anyway, on that note, I hope you will stay safe, be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye!